right, so we're going to look at our magazine project. If you go to your magazine folder, which is in your desktop, in grade 9 graphics, if you go to magazine project, you'll see that there's a couple examples of magazine covers. There's a magazine covers elements um, file and the actual project itself. So let's take a look at the, the project here. Uh, basically, it's broken down into a number of sections. Uh, you're going to be using um, images to create a magazine cover um, and uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. So the very first thing that you're going to do is a little bit of research. So you'll go, uh, go online um, or you can go down to the library and, and find some magazines and find examples of working magazines. And what we want you to do is to basically uh, pick these kind of as an inspiration to what it is that you're going to be working with. But it also is an opportunity to show that you understand um, some of the elements that we're looking for. Because every magazine has elements that are similar. Uh, however, if you're not aware of what they are, then it's hard to create uh, something that actually will work. And so the idea behind the research is that you find examples or elements in these examples that you like and that you want to apply to your project. The second thing that we want you to do is uh, call your treatment. And treatment is basically just an outline of what we're going to see on your magazine cover. It should have your, the title of the magazine, a little brief description of what it is. And if it's a completely fictional magazine, that's fine. You'll still need to add a description. You're going to have to write down what the heading and subheadings is, and then publication details, like the cost, the issue number, the month, that sort of thing. And then your layout ideas. Where will things go? And whether you're going to use some uh, graphics in there and banners and that sort of thing. So uh, to do that, you'll write it up in pages. So if you click on pages, it'll open up, and then you can type in all that information. Uh, you just create a blank document, and basically this is Apple's version of Word, and once you've got your blank document open, you can type in all your information, blah, 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 and then you will go file, and you'll save it to your file on the desktop. So I'll just cancel that because I'm not actually going to write out the treatment because that's something that you're going to do. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next thing. You'll notice as well on each page it says either complete or incomplete. If you've completed it, then I'll initial it, and if it's not, then you won't get my initials. So you want to make sure that I'm signing off on this as we go along. Um, the next step, which is part three, uh, it says assign it to me, it's really part three, uh, is to create a storyboard. Now, I've mentioned th these are three examples of different student magazines. What we want you to do is to make three different working versions of your magazine. And it's like I said in the past, if I have a client who hires me, you don't want to give them one thing and say, hey, here you go, here's your magazine cover, hope you like it, because chances are they'll want to make changes. So you give them something to choose from, uh, and then that way they can look at different uh, layout options and you can brainstorm what needs to be changed and what needs to stay the same. So you can print out these storyboard sheets with the printer in the lab, and you can uh, draw up your storyboards. They don't have to be super beautiful or anything like that. They just need to kind of give us the gist of what things will look like and where things will go. Uh, the next thing is putting it all together, which is using um, Photoshop. Now, this does say Photoshop Elements, so uh, you can disregard that. We are using Photoshop in here. So, uh, yeah, we'll work with some of the concepts that we've used before, uh, working with layers, selections, masks, and now we're going to start working with typography. And over the next uh, few days here, you're going to get some more tutorials on typography and how to, uh, to make that more interesting. The last thing you're going to do is, uh, or one of the last things you're going to do is a critique. And uh, that's basically, you know, what, what worked, what didn't. And you'll tell me, uh, you know, what those things are. And we'll look at, you know, what possible changes you could make in the future to make it even better. And as you can see, it says assignment five and assignment seven, because I'm not a math teacher. Uh, your, uh, the last part is to um, submit this uh, as part of your portfolio. Basically what that means is have you filled in the marking sheet on it and did you save it in the right spot? Here's some ex student examples and then this is how we're marking them. So, you know, uh, your research, your treatment, your storyboards, your magazine cover, 
your critique and your self-assessment. Mm -hmm. And so you see there's a column for your mark and a column for my mark. Okay, so I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So your magazine cover should have all of these elements, and this is in another document that's in your folder. Uh, it should have the masthead, which is mm -hmm. right here. That's your masthead. Mm -hmm. So that's the title of the magazine. Uh, some magazines have a selling line. Um, you know, uh, this one I put in is Alberta's Guide to the Mountains. Uh, they often have a date line, so you know that uh, whether it's a current issue or not. Uh, and then you'll have the main cover, which is like the big article that people tend to hone in on. And then they'll have cover lines, which are kind of the other articles that are in your magazine. And then, of course, the barcode. And usually with the barcode, there's price as well. So that's typically what you'll see in a magazine. If I go to bikemagazine.com here, uh, just as an example, uh, now you see there's no bikes here, or er, uh, magazines here, but there is an example right here. If you take a look at this, you can see here's our masthead, and it says, you know, long-term tested, that's probably gonna be their selling line. Uh, and then you've got champions, dreamers, freaks, outlaws, and vigilantes, and then saluting mountain bikes, unbeatable rebel spirit. Well, this bigger text here is probably going to be your uh, your main cover title, and then everything else, including the stuff at the bottom, is going to be your cover lines. And then, of course, there's the barcode. And as you can see, very simple layout, uh, just one photo, and that's it. And if you look at any of the other examples, you're going to see pretty much the same thing on every one of them. See, the thing about working with uh, magazines is that they usually have the same front page format for almost every issue. So once you make one, it's basically a template for the rest. And you usually don't change things too, too much. So you can see Bike Magazine's big on the picture and very little on the text. And so, um, so yeah, it's something that draws people in. And uh, yeah, it's quite effective. So. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, putting this together in Photoshop. So as you can see, uh, in this working Photoshop document, uh, basically I have a whole bunch of layers. And what we always want to start out with is a blank document or a new document. So if I went File New, I would choose U.S. paper size, and I choose letter, and I hit OK, and that's what I would get is a blank document. Next thing you're going to need is a photo to work with, and so you can use your own photos if you like, uh, or you can go to the internet and you can use uh, photos that don't have uh, any copyright attached to them, um, or rather a copyright that allows us to use it for free, like an attribution license. So you can go to Flickr.com and you can look for uh, photos of just about anything. And you can see that with the attribution license, basically there's like 36 million photos in here. So if I do a search for, okay, so I did a search for cows. And as you can see, here's a lovely picture of a cow and, or well, a couple of cows here. Now, growing up on a farm, I had no idea why you'd want horns on your cows. But anyway, um, if you want to use one of these, then just go to Actions, go to View All Sizes, and you can choose whatever size is appropriate, and then you can hit Download. Now, the thing is, if you're using these images, what they're asking you to do is to credit the person who took the picture. So you can put into your magazine document, or even in the treatment, in this case, the the name of the person that you got this photo from. So if we go back to Photoshop here, uh, you can see I've got my picture, uh, and now I'm gonna start adding my, my text. So basically, you know, I wanna add you know, my text in places that aren't going to be distracting. Um, and we wanna may be able to highlight some of this stuff. Uh, so as you can see, my text, some of it has drop shadows in it, some of it has some color to it, and you can see that in these text layers I have all of these different effects. So if I click on the fall photo issue, which is right here, and I go to effects, I can choose a number of different effects like drop shadow, and you can see there's instantly a drop shadow. I can even change the color of that if I wanted, as you can see, or I can pick a color for it. Um, 
or I can do things like have a inner glow. Um, you know, that's not going to show up because it's the darkness. So inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, uh, and then tablet and emboss. So uh, basically, all of these different tools give your text a, a specific look and feel. And they just work with the sliders here. So there's no real right or wrong with them. You can add them as you see fit. So some of this helps the text stand out um, from the background. And other times, you just don't need it. So uh, be careful where you place your text. If you're using colors, I typically, when I create something like this, I'm going to pick colors from the existing photo. So the water has been really good for that. So this darker blue here, that was picked for this over here uh, just now. But uh, you can always change up uh, your colors to match what you're looking at. One way to get your text to stand out, however, is to add a shape layer. And to do that, we have shapes over here. If I take the rectangle tool and I draw out a shape like this, it's just going to cover it up. But if I drag it underneath, you can see now that makes that very easy to read. Now, the unfortunate thing is this looks terrible. So you have options with this layer. You can turn down the transparency so we can see through it, um, or you can try to blend it in with the background with one of these blend options. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So you'll have to think about that prior to putting everything together. Uh, you'll have to add your UPC code, and that's down here. And I've got a one for you to use for your project, and I'll drop that onto your computer for you. And basically, that's it. So magazine covers are really simple. It's all about placing text and, um, and making sure that it does work with the background, not distract it or cover up too many of the details. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with working with text at all, T is your text tool. If you click anywhere on your document, you can type in uh, some text. And then when you're done, you can hit the check mark up at the top. And you can always take your move tool and move it around to where you want it. And if you need to edit again, say T for your text tool. And I always click between the text, and then I can select what it is that I want. And if I want to get rid of that layer altogether, I just hit the move keys guy. So pretty simple project, really, when you think about it. Now, what I've been suggesting to people is to be creative with it. You know, maybe you've got a nice picture of the mountains. Super duper. Okay, that's great. Uh, but if you want to use some of the compositing things that you've been working on beforehand, maybe you could come up with a completely different style of image, like, uh, like this one here. I call it Bumblebee Cowboys, and I'm working on that right now. And if we take a closer look here, you'll see that uh, all the bumblebees in this particular document have, uh, oops, let's undo that, sorry. They have cowboys on them, as you can see. So I took some photos of cowboys out at Water Valley as they were doing some branding a couple springs ago. And I've got some pictures of some bees, and now I'm adding them to, uh, to my document here. So you could have Bumblebee Cowboy Monthly or something like that. Uh, so it's really up to you how creative you want to be with this. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. I would suggest trying out uh, a simple layout first and then trying something a little more complex after. And, uh, of course, if you have questions, you can always ask.